Ben here with the Point Five Patrol. Today we're gonna to be changing out the manual transmission fluid on my 2023 FL5 Pacific Type R. I'm gonna be using AC Delco Synchro Mesh. And if you're asking, why am I using AC Delco Synchro Mesh? The answer's right on the bottle, guys. It turns friction, it modifies it from friction into mesh. Mesh is soft, soft like the Downy Snuggle Bear. And if you don't want liquefied Downy Snuggle Bears hugging your synchros, then what kind of car parent are you in the first place? But that's besides the point. Also, another reason, Amsoil, hard to get. You gotta know a guy or a bunch of guys. I don't have to know anybody but one person and one person alone, and that's Daddy Bezos. And he's got a website called Amazon. I'd get this on Amazon, no human interaction required. Let's go ahead and get started. Step one. Pop the hood. All right, and for step two, you gotta remove this factory air box. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. All right, so first things first, we gotta get these two 10 nuts and the snorkel off here. Set those aside. And this you just kind of work up and out. It's got tabs front and rear. And then also on the sides here, lift up on those, set that out of the way. You've got a 10 down below the snorkel as well as back here. Go ahead and loosen those. Then you're gonna disconnect your map sensor. You're gonna pull down on this top tab. You're gonna pull left on this tab, set that to the side. And then these are five and a half millimeter here. I'm gonna try to remove it from this section here instead of this section here. It just makes it a little bit easier. So, I'm gonna walk these back. Get those nice and loose. Separate your air box. It's got a tab here in the back and a tab here on the side. And it makes it possible then to lift this up. Then we're gonna fight this off. It's never easy. Set that to the side there. Set my air filter aside as well. Here. It's got a pop tab below the snorkel here, so you need to lift. There it is. So this is now loose, but it does have connections here that you need to pry loose. You can use a pocket screwdriver. You can use your fingernails like I'm using. Either way, don't break the clips, bad form. There we go. We've got our air box out. So that only takes a couple seconds. Our fill bolt is right here on top of the transmission. I'll show that on the camera here in just a second, but there's another thing that I need to do first. Since it is fall and there are just leaves raining out of the sky, I'm gonna tape this off so that no debris gets inside of uh, my air intake. I've also gotta get underneath the car and remove the splash shield. So we're gonna do that. All next. right, all right. So I wanna show you up top here. This is the fill bolt uh, underneath the air box. This is uh, 32 foot pounds, um, so it's not gonna be very hard to break loose. Make sure that you use a new washer. I went to Honda this morning and bought two washers. They're both the same size, the one for the fill and the one for the drain. So I'm gonna hop under the car uh, real fast and show you the rest. All right. There is our drain hole right there. And then right above these two lines, you're gonna see that 10 millimeter bolt. That 10 millimeter bolt is also gonna come into play here. After we drain the fluid, we're gonna crack that bolt loose and we're gonna remove it and we're gonna add fluid until fluid starts peeing out of that bolt. Once it slows to a, uh, like a very steady drip, we're gonna call the transmission full at that point. All right, so it's important to mention here that you definitely wanna uh, open up the, the fill bolt first uh, before you loosen the drain plug at the bottom. That way the fluid has a chance to breathe. It's gonna flow out of the transmission much quicker that way. So uh, it's just a 3 8 socket end uh, that you stick down in here and we're gonna break it loose. Here it is right here. And 
here's the washer. So we're gonna set these aside for now. I'm not reusing this washer. I'm gonna end up throwing it away. I bought a fresh one today. Here's the top tip. If it happens to be fall when you do this and there's just shit falling out of the trees everywhere and you still need that to breathe when you're draining your transmission fluid, simply stick the air filter right here. There, that's better. Nothing can get in there now. Okay, so as any of you know, creating videos is hard, especially when you do it by yourself. So I pre-cracked this loose because it's really hard to hold a camera with one hand when you need two hands to break this guy loose. So here we go, about to get a bunch of fluid on my hands, but no, nope, maybe not. And there goes the fluid. So we're gonna let that drain. Good news is it actually looks pretty clean. I'm not at all upset with that, but we're still going to change it out nonetheless because this transmission's had uh, seven hard track days on it. Uh, so this is going to be a super severe maintenance schedule if you think about it that way. Uh, we want to keep this thing in good condition. These transmissions are really expensive, so frequent fluid exchanges every seven to, seven to ten track days, probably not a bad idea. All right, guys, so I got all the fluid drained out. I've got a new washer on here. So we're gonna tighten this. Fortunately, I won't be able to show you on camera, but I'm gonna come back with my torque wrench set to 32 foot pounds, and we're gonna tighten this drain plug. Then I'm gonna use some paper towels and a little bit of brake cleaner just to clean up the area where the fluid has dripped. And then I'm gonna come over here behind these lines. I'm gonna take that 10 millimeter bolt out, and we're gonna get back on top and start filling fluid. All right, guys, so I bought three bottles of this synchro mesh. I've got my funnel ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to start pouring it in, and I've got that 10 millimeter bolt underneath uh, taken out. Once fluid starts peeing out of that, you can let it kind of get down to a, a slow dribble. Go ahead and put that 10 millimeter bolt back in, and you're done. That's literally it. That's all you've got to do. Um, just be careful pouring this stuff in so that it doesn't get all over the place. It's kind of hard to clean up. Uh, but this is so far one quart down. And uh, I've got a, a drain pan underneath uh, all of this so that I can kind of from up here start watching to see when that fluid comes out. I'm sure I could look up the, the actual fill capacity on this, but since I didn't, I don't know how much it's going to take. Um, but it's certainly going to take less than three because not a whole lot of fluid came out in the first place. Didn't really fill the pan. All right. That's two down. And I'm not seeing any drips yet, so I'm going to grab the third bottle and start adding that. And it's okay if you overfill this because if you have the um, that 10 millimeter bolt out, you just let it drain back. And when, again, when it gets to that slow dribble, you know that it's full. Obviously, you don't want to, you know, purposefully put that 10 back in and continue to fill the transmission. That would be a gross overfill. And uh, what happens there is the fluid actually begins to froth when you're driving the car, and froth does not lubricate synchros. Froth makes a mess of things because it's aerated and it's going to cause you all sorts of problems. So, yep, I've got a slow drip starting now coming out of that 10 millimeter bolt. Um, I'm going to let that go for just a second until, like I said before, it gets down to like a, a slow dribble. Then I'm going to go ahead and put the 10 millimeter back in. I'm going to come back up top here. I'm going to torque my top bolt with the new washer to 32 foot pounds. And then we reassemble everything. We put the air box back in and uh, that's it. Transmission fluid exchange done. All right, so this is the view from under the car from that 10 millimeter hole. Um, and right now the fluid's moving too fast to uh, put the 10 millimeter bolt back in. There it is. It's got a little washer on it too. Um, I'm going to wait for that to slow down a little bit more. I'll, uh, I'll start the camera again when it's uh, slow enough to the point where I feel comfortable um, that it's not overfilled and show you kind of what that looks like. All right guys, so take a look at how it's dripping right now. That's exactly what you're looking for. 
Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put this 10 millimeter with the washer back in the hole. Unless you drop it in the pan of transmission fluid like I just did, therefore saturating my hand in transmission fluid. But, you know, shit happens. Just did. There we go. I think, I think we're getting it threaded there now. That's gonna be fun to clean up. All right. And for those of you who have done this before, I bet you can smell this video. Transmission fluid is some of the stinkiest stuff on the planet. Any kind of gear oil is, especially if it's burnt. Luckily it's not burnt in this case because that just makes you nauseous, but um, you know, it, it does not have a good smell. Uh, but I need to free up my hands now so that I can get on that with a ratchet and tighten it up. Uh, you don't have to go very tight on that. Uh, you, you will feel the washer slip and then compress slightly and that's when you know that you're done. You don't have to go any further than that. Plus it's a small bolt. It's not going to require a lot of torque. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and secure the, um, the fill bolt. So off with the old washer, that's trash. On with the new washer. Just gonna go ahead and screw it in. Pretty easy. Now, I'm having to use a series of extensions um, on my torque wrench in order to get down into this. If you have a shorter torque wrench that can fit down in there, great. But I had to use basically uh, two three inch extensions plus a six inch. So now that I've got that in there, I can start tightening this up. I did actually raise the torque on my torque wrench because you inevitably lose torque through a longer distance. In this case, you know, we're talking a foot long of extensions. So I raised my torque to 40 foot pounds. And, you know, there's no exact, I don't know the exact math on that. I'm sure there is, but, um, you know, 40 foot pounds seems enough to me uh, with that much extension to be correct right around 32. So keep that in mind. The more distance that you have from your, um, your torque wrench, the less torque you have. It's just like if you're doing a tire rotation, you'll notice some technicians are using what's called torque sticks. Um, and torque sticks uh, are designed to uh, stop the lug nut in that case at a specified torque and they vary in length. So one thing to keep in mind there. Um, but that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I'm going to go ahead and put the air box back in. Um, you guys saw that come out, so it's really just a matter of reverse order here. I do appreciate you uh, following along. Please like and subscribe the video.